go live, go live. Hi! Happy Monday! <laughs> How is everyone? Happy Monday. This is the last Monday before Christmas. Ah! Mmm, fix it, Jesus. I don't have a single decoration up, but Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. No tree. Nothing. He, <laughs> my husband's struggling. <laughs> Who knows? We still have time. I don't know. But anyway. Do y'all have Christmas stuff up? God bless you if you do. Send me a picture of it. And I'll just <laughs> we'll look at your decorations. But happy, happy, happy Monday to you, you and you. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker. I'm executive pastor of the Suit for His Presence Ministries under the leadership of our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. And this handsome gentleman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Minister Al Tucker. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. So... <laughs> I don't know. We just started with the shenanigans on today, but anyway, happy Monday. Let's try to um, do it through Team Tucker and see if it it gives us more juice. Who knows? Um, whenever this is happening, I'm always like, okay, Lord, speak to your people because if it was just some shenanigans up here, then everything went one fine. But um. Again, I'm not sure if you heard us or not, but my name is Minister Shonda Tucker, and this is my handsome husband. Minister Al Tucker, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, we want to give a shout out to our church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. We had in-person worship yesterday. Mm, mm, mm. You should have been there. Uh, Minister uh, Dr. Tiffany Richburg Morris preached her face off. The Lord used her in a mighty way. And it was just a powerful service from beginning to end. And so um, just just an amazing time of fellowship. It was a packed house. And uh, it was awesome. So, um, wow, you should have been there. But it, it was awesome. It was uh, um, Dr. Tiffany's message was about... Um, worrying and about whatever your thing is, whatever the bait is that the enemy can dangle before you that will get you off track um, and the importance of having Holy Spirit in your life. So it was powerful, powerful, powerful. But this morning, our assignment is to lead the body of Christ in corporate prayer. We do that every Monday. And the Lord said recently that every third Monday that um, we would focus on the men. <laughs> <laughs> that we would focus on the men and that my husband would lead that part so um, y'all pray for him because he is walking in obedience today so <clears throat> can't any business oh Bible study this Wednesday the OGs have taken over again uh, Minister Kim Martin I believe is doing Bible study this Wednesday at 6.30 uh, she is going to be Doing chapter seven in this book, God's Maximum. We're getting ready to wrap it up, y'all. We're trying to wrap it up for December. So she's going to have chapter seven, and I'm going to have chapter eight next week. And then we'll be done. Yay! So, again, God's Maximum. Experience the highest level uh, attainable. Even if you don't have the book, join us for Bible study. It is a powerful book, and it is blessing our socks off. So that's on Wednesday. I think that's all I got. That's it? That's it, babe. Mm. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, as she said, we post, I guess we'll do this little series on talking to the men. So, um, today, we're not bashing, we're not bashing the men. Actually, we, I shouldn't say just talking to the men because the word's for everybody. It's just going to be a little more emphasis on the men, I think, with every third Monday or whatever. So, this is the first one. I'm pretty sure that will be the last one, but um, <laughs> the word, I mean, we just. God is so awesome. God is so awesome. I mean, like I said, she said that if y'all didn't hear Dr. Tiffany, y'all need to go back and hear the word. She she, she did a great job yesterday. Mm -hmm. But let's get on with the thing, the thing today. And, it, and, and what it is, you know, I don't know, me and my wife were talking a couple weeks ago, and then I got to, you know, I just got to, this, talk, this thing with a lot of things about how the world is going today. And, you know, 
every one of us can tell, every one of us, man, child, woman, male, could, could name probably at least two, three reasons right off the bat what we, how we think the world is going to, how we think the world is not what it should be. So me, unbeknownst, you know, I, I, that's one day I was praying, I got to get, I mean, the Lord got talking about this, you know, and he, uh, <laughs> He gave me a few things to do. Um, what he thought, well, basically the same. The one reason why the, the world we live in, not the world, the, the old world, how we how it was, we came up is, is for this. We're not putting God first. We're not putting God first place in our lives. Not only the church, but everybody. We're not, I mean, I probably do better in the area myself, but I probably put God first in everything I do. You know, and he, he, and he was saying that what specific when it comes to the men is we're not taking our rightful place as being the head of the household. Now, I'm not saying you got to be a dictator. Don't mean you got to go there and beat your wife over the head or be your chair. Don't do that anymore. Anyway. <laughs> you know, try to leave with an iron fist. No, we, 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 in God's word, God said about man, man being head of the household is to be in the spiritual being of the house. So today's word is very simple. God just wants us to spend time with him. He wants us to spend, you know, to get, he want not only not only men, but the women too, he wants us to spend time with him. Take time for God. That's the, that's, that's the word for the day. He wants, you know, just take time for him. You know, so I mean, and now y'all see this, one of the first parts of me and man got time. I don't have time. I got, I, I got, I'm trying to go to work, trying to make sure my family good, make sure the household good, make sure all the, the lawn look good, got that getting these cooking well together. Now, if, Basically, what I'm saying is, you really, you don't have, you, you, you don't have time not to really, because the way the world going there these days, and, until we take our right for being, not just being here in the house, so just spending time with the Lord, spending time with the Lord, getting the Lord first place in our life, ain't nothing gonna work for us. And I'm gonna tell you from experience, it, it works. I mean, the, the best thing I ever did with my life was turn my life back to Christ and start spending time with Him. And what I mean by spending time is word is I'm talking about praying, reading his word, studying his word, and meditating on his word. Because God not only wants you to spend time with him, but he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to listen. God does go through devotion in the morning, we through devotions like a like a chore. We read devotion, so we get that get it over with, go on to the next thing. But doing this, he wants to take time and just listen to what he got to tell us. Listen for the guy's direction he wanted to give us. Because we all, some people are like, man, how do you hear from God? You hear from God, you got to be still. You got to sit still long enough to hear from God. So a lot of people, you know, you tell people that you, people saying, you, you talk to people sometimes when you tell them you hear from God, they look at you like you're crazy. I mean, God ain't talking to you. <laughs> but, but God will talk to you. If you take time, spend time with him, he will talk to you. And then what he wants to do, he just wants to spend time with him. Just sit down before him. Now, I'm going to let that tell read your word, but meditate on your word, study your word, get into your word. And, and, and um, I got this little study I'm going to tell you about a little later because this, I look, when, you, when I look at it, I, 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 it was hard for me to believe. I said, no, it can't be right. Now, I'm not saying that the women should, y'all should keep doing what y'all are doing. Yes, y'all should keep doing what keep, keep studying the word. Now, like our church, we got a lot of women who's powerful in the church. I mean, my, my, my wife is, is a minister. I'm also one, so you know, even though she's around, you, the man, if you're the man in the house, you still should be able to be the spiritual leader of the house, even though she is a minister. But you, and, and you, and it makes so bad. She, you might not know, but she wants you to take that job. She please, wants, please take the. Money, please. <laughs> she, she wants you to be be, be the prayer warrior of the house. She wants you, to, you know, pray for the kids, pray for her. You know, just set the temple of the house for how y'all gonna worship in the house. How y'all gonna worship. How y'all gonna praise God? How y'all gonna read the word? You know, read the word with your family. Read the word. Cause in the Old Testament, Moses told them, you know, sit down with your family, read the word with your family, teach your family the word. And see, that's how it and, and that God really wants to be for the man to be spiritually leader at health. Now, and then now wanna know why that's important? That's what our lives depend on. Without spending time with the word, spending time with the Lord, and we in <laughs> <laughs> we call them big trouble. Yeah. So um, that's all I got for y'all. I just want y'all to spend time with the Lord, just be with the Lord, 
Just know, just do what the Lord wants you to do. And um, if we, if we're about not spending time in the Word doing what the Lord wants to do, we actually we 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 found our why, we found our family, we found our children, we found we found the younger generation. And the setup table. Uh, if you, if we, can I ask a question? Keep it in in the chat. What's what? The study is. No, I have to do it afterwards. Okay. Um, what does that look like to take the to take the lead to take the head? Um, because, like you said, um. I'm pretty strong, uh, well, strong-minded, and uh, I'm a leader at work and a leader pretty much everywhere. So what does that look like when you say um, take the lead? Because I, I remember being at, at a, um, gosh, what was it? It was some kind of church meeting or something, and, and it was for married couples. And this guy had been away at... Uh, had been incarcerated and his wife had been holding down the fort with the kids and so when he came home he was trying to step back into the father role and be the head and, and run things and um, he stood up and asked the question he said I'm back home now and he said and I just want to prepare my wife for the takeover and all the women in the room were like <laughs> Like, it was almost a riot because it was like the energy that he was bringing where he was like, I'm ready to take over was was crazy. And and I think sometimes that's why women sometimes will push back on that because it's like, yeah, you my daddy, you gonna tell me what to do. It's not that. It doesn't look like that. But if you don't tell me what that looks like, I don't know what that means when you say, um, how are you um, the spiritual head of of the house. What does that mean? Does that mean I don't have any power? Or does that mean <laughs> you strong army? Or what does that look like for us when you spiritually take take the lead? Oh well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for me and my wife, this is this, this what it looks like for us. I mean, sure, my wife is a boss at work. She hey, she she she's she, she's a powerful woman. She and and I don't mean no harm. I, I rather let I rather let her pray, read the word, and everything. I mean, <laughs> speak the word because I think she do a phenomenal job. But what I'm saying is, by you taking the lead, being being head of the household, is lead your family in prayer. It ain't like you trying to you're not trying to put you know we're not trying to put our wife light out and none because because they they did what God want them to do they do it they they I hate to say it but they a whole lot more beating with we are than you if, you if you go to the, you just go to the church now. You go to church, and more women in the church than men. And that's part of the problem where our world the dimension like it is now. Mm -hmm. But what she's saying about taking the charge, just do it. Ask God how, how he wants you to take charge of your house. That's one thing you need to do. Not take charge when you're being a spiritual leader. But just, just leave you like that. Like, like, me and my wife in the morning, I mean, I think she, really, I think she pray a whole lot better than I can. But... Every morning, I'm being a big with God when we do so. I, we, we pray. I said, well, baby, let's, it's time to pray. We pray before we do our devotion in the morning. And I mean, and sometimes we might do it, even during the day, sometimes we get up and they, baby, let's, 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 we get to talk about the word. And even been discussed about the word. Because yeah, I'm not the smartest, the smartest person in the world. And I, I, I lean on her and look, if I don't know it, we're we, we going to find it somewhere. I said, baby, because I might read the scripture, baby, what, what do this mean? That don't mean that you. That you you ain't got to know everything. Cause God can help me along the way. He'll help me along the way. You got to know everything, but be the one that encourages the children and encourage your wife. You know, just get into your word. Cause that's one thing we need God's word. Without God's word, we 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 bound for we bound for death. We we we, we bound for destruction. So do I have to um, beg you to go to church <laughs> on Sunday? On Sunday, what's happening? No, you don't be. You don't have to beg me to go to church. Cause see, I, I love the Lord for one thing, so I'm, I'm trying to be with God when we do so. I love going to church. So nobody's leaving anybody behind. It's not a mandate that we have to go to church. It is just something that we do, that we enjoy. Um, we have to go to a church that we both enjoy, so I think that's important. Um, I think finding a church who feeds marriages and feeds relationships and feeds what we're trying to do was important for us as well. So... Um, him taking the lead is not bossy. It is him saying, okay, babe, let's pray. I can call him about something that's happening at work or something that I'm upset about with the family or 
the girls or anything. And his his response is always, let's pray. Um, that's, that's getting me back focused on st stop responding to it in your flesh. Let's, let's get back to the word. So he doesn't have to have all the answers, but the fact that he calibrates me back to listen, this is what we believe. And this is what we do over here. Just that reminder, just that, um, um, setting the pick, um, of, of what happens spiritually It's not, domineering and bossy it is a teammate who is saying look let's get back and keep the first thing the first thing if I got up in the morning and didn't read my word and just got up and started getting ready for work I, I think he would say you okay <laughs> did you read already he's gonna bring it up lovingly I don't think I've ever done that but I just know that <laughs> But we just keep each other accountable to, hey, let's pray. Um, if we're getting ready to go somewhere, we may take communion in the car. Sometimes I'm rushing, I'm ready to go, and he's handing me a communion cup like, we ain't going nowhere <laughs> until we do this. So just that taking the lead of just reminding and being being the one who keeps pointing us back to Christ. Sometimes it's him, sometimes it's me, but most of the time it's him. He is the steady, even kill. This is what we do over here. So it is not being bossy and being domineering. If you are married now and your husband is not the spiritual head, that's fine. You don't have to beat him over the head and choke him out with that. That's not what we want. And it may not look like what it looks like for us. What you pray about as a woman of God, um, the word says that you can win him by your by your faith and how you live. Just God, whatever it is that he needs to experience so that he has more of an appetite for you. I remember him telling me um, in the beginning, and it was hard for my ears to hear. What'd you say? Oh, <laughs> I say all the time, look, I need you to love God more than you love me. Or you like, I said, or you like to hear, look, I love the Lord more than I love you. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? What'd you say? <laughs> But him saying it made me really sit with that thing and be like, of course he needs to love the Lord more than he loves me because I need him to have a relationship with God so God can teach him how to love me. I don't know how to treat him. I don't know how to do right. You think I would automatically know that. I'm 53 years old. No, no. I have to go to the Lord and say, God, teach me how to love him. So that means God has to be first place in my life. So when he sees me, if he ever saw me not reading my word or being committed to the Lord, then he that puts a question mark. Like, okay, she's not putting God first. So what's happening? That's that's the thing that we're talking about is just giving God first place in your life. So I just wanted to give a practical example of what that what that looks like in the family. Just grabbing your wife's hand and saying, babe, let's just pray together. You know, I see you're upset. I see you had a rough day at work. Let's just pray. And even if she's not open to that, just praying over her, just praying, you know, you, you don't have to be as confrontational. You don't think she's going to be receptive to that. You know, just it, hug her as she's going out the door to work. And you could be whispering a prayer then and just saying, God, cover her and God bless her. As she comes to your mind throughout the day, her or your kids, pray for them because that's how it begins of setting that covering and becoming the spiritual head for your house. Amen. Okay. And um, one, one thing, um, being, putting God first in your life, and me and God spend the time with the Lord, you know, it, it the, the, the benefits are unreal. I mean, you wouldn't believe, but from personal I'm saying from personal experience, putting God first in your life and being, you know, spending time with the Lord, sitting with the Lord, meditating on the words, asking God to speak to you and to get, give you guys direction. Every relationship in your life will turn better, mm -hmm. will, will be better. Okay. And not only your relationship with God will be better, but your relationship with your wife will be better, your relationship with your children will be better, your relationship with the people with your job will be better. Every relationship, every relationship you're involved in will be, will be better just by you spending time with the Lord. And then you ask me, why, why should we keep spending time? Why, why do we spend time with the Lord? I read this case study. Um, I said, I had the wife read it to me yesterday when we was coming home from church. I need mean, to pull this up because I had, I had read it one time before, but the numbers so, sometimes seem crazy. Now, if you think about it, most, <laughs> if, if you like me, you've been going to church like your whole life most of the time. After Christmas and Easter, Mother's Day is the third most, uh, 
mm -hmm. attendance follow attendance at church. Father's Day follow near the bottom, probably the least most you go to church. But they don't take they, they don't take they don't they don't mean that the Father's Day should be the head of the household, should be head like because because of this study here, what was it there? I gotta find it now. Okay. Some of these numbers probably sound crazy, y'all, but hey, I, I didn't believe either. I kept reading it. It says, according to the data, if a father does not go to church, even if his wife does, only one child in 50 will become a regular worshiper. Now, if a father does go regularly, regardless of what the mother does, between two-thirds and three-quarters of the children will attend church as adults. That means when we be a father, it don't mean we making that children come to church, making, but when you stay at home and your wife couldn't keep the church, one or the fifth of children are going to actually, when they get older, they're going to, they're going to stay in church. Now, when the father takes the kids to church, even if the mother wants to stay at home, two thirds, two to three, or even three quarters, three or four of the children are going to remain in church and go to church when they become adults. This seems pretty far crazy. This seems pretty crazy, but hey, I don't, it, they did the study, and then in, in, in New and I, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, why is that? Why is that? Because I did have had that would, because that was how the Lord intended for it to be anyway. The Lord wanted man to be the, head, the spiritual head of the house, teaching, not only teaching the word to his kids and to, not to his wife, but just being, you know, just being the old hall spiritual head. I mean, being the ones that know eight hey, kids, listen, let's get together, let's go to church this morning. And the only way you can't do that sitting at home and letting the wife do it. You had to show them by example, especially being a being a boy. Being, you, you got males in the house. They want hey, they, 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 my dad didn't go to church. My mom was here to church. I mean, I mean, you look at look at the word today. If we were doing like God wants to do it, we it, we wouldn't be suffering like we is now. <clears throat> and even the numbers even get more profound when you, if you go to look at the, at the if you create kids Sunday school and everything. But I'm not getting into that. I'm just saying. You mean let's just take our let's take our let's take our rightful place and just do what the Lord wants us to do. Being right here in the house and just spend time with the Lord. That's all this is the only mess I really want to get across to me. Let us spend time with the Lord. Not only for the men, but for the women also. Let us spend more time with the Lord. Get into God's word and study his word and measure his word and listen for what he got to do. Yeah. And it's go ahead, I was so much I had I had read this morning. Um, one of the scriptures that we looked at was Mark, the first chapter in the 35th verse. And it says, in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. This is our Lord and Savior. He made time to his first thing in the morning is, is to get up and pray. So if he did it, surely uh, we need to do it. So um, the other one that's. Hubby pointed out was James, the fourth chapter in the eighth verse. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your minds, ye double-minded. So God will honor this sacrifice, this time that you're trying to spend with him, even in the midst of doing everything else that you got going on. So, And the last one is Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 13th verse. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So those three scriptures were Mark, the first chapter, the 35th verse, Jeremiah 29 and 13, and James 4 and 8. Who's the last one? Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Amen. Now, the first one she read was, was Jesus. Even Jesus, when he was on earth, he took time to pray. He took time to go spend time with the Lord. Jesus, God Himself, He ain't, ain't something He had to do, but He was He was leading by example. Then He was showing us that no matter what we do in life, we got we got to take time to spend time with the Lord. And it was later when she said, you know, um, seek God, seek God. We seek God all the time because seeking God, we seeking God for wisdom, seeking God just to learn God ways, just be more obedient to what He wants us to do. And it, and we got we need to be obedient. That's one thing we do need to do. We need to be obedient. And by doing this, it will cause less stress in your life. You can feel better. You don't be worried about anything. Because you put everything in God's hands. You're spending more time with God. So you're doing more, being more in a godly place. 
people won't be, you won't go to work, people make you mad all the time. Your wife won't be making mad all the time. You know, my wife don't get mad all the time. Thank God. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you know, just spend time with the Lord. Just, just get, get food, just spend some time with the Lord. You find time to do everything else. You will watch football games. I do it myself. I mean, you do everything. You go to clean the cars. You do cut the grass. You know, in the summertime, walk it. Just, just take some time to spend time with the Lord. That's all he wants. He wants you to spend time with him. And I read this thing this morning. It was saying, um, we have a heart for God. It's saying that we, your heart was made to hold God. Mm. And it said, you were made by God and for God. It said, until you understand that, life will never make sense. Wow. Read that again. Your heart was made to hold God. Mm. You were made by God and for God. And, and until you understand that, life would never make sense. Wow. That's a really good point because what we may be talking about this morning may be foreign to you. If you're married, you may already have a rhythm with your wife where, you know, you just do things a certain way. But if that's not working, um, God sent us on assignment to say there's a better way. There's a different way to do this. Um, it is no disrespect to the men. We need our men. Um, yesterday at church, I kept thinking, when we go to church, I, I'm thinking more about it's important for us to worship together. But I was thinking yesterday, it's important for children to see men at church, to see families at church, to see what that looks like. If that's not what their home life is, at least when they go to church, they may, they can experience that. So your presence matters. Just showing up, just being there. Um, it doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that comes from the pulpit. That's why the word says to study, to show yourself approved. Your pastor's human. So, so study to get an agreement of the word and to understand the word and to fully um, receive. But if you go expecting to encounter God and to experience him, he's going to meet you right in that place. If life is not making sense, if you're just going to work and coming home and not feeling appreciated by your wife or by your kids or by anybody, this is just a different way welcome God into your heart and into the equation and it doesn't have to be we're, we're <laughs> ministers and pastors so our commitment is a little bit different it is a calling that we accept it but for you just work on the relationship with the Lord just say to him God I want to know you in a better way um, they say you will, and they say you do all these wonderful things, but I didn't experience that, so I want to know you in a greater way, and he will meet you right where you are. It doesn't have to be, um, you got to know this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Please, don't start reading the Word. If you don't read the Word on a regular basis, don't start in Genesis, because by the time you get to Exodus and Numbers and all them tribes, you, you're going you're gonna to jump ship. Start, <laughs> start in Romans. Start in Ephesians, um, start in Galatians, all those that teach you how to live. Uh, Second Corinthians, I, read, I think I read Second Corinthians every day because it's, it's reminding me of, of tangible things that I can do to, to honor God. So our assignment this morning was just to, to say to the men, listen, we need y'all. We need you present and we need you um, just showing up and just showing up for your family. It matters. The trajectory of your children's life, it matters. Even if um, <clears throat> you're not in the same home with your with your children, doesn't mean you can't cover them in prayer. Doesn't mean your children, your grandchildren, they still need your prayers. I believe that something different happens when men pray. When men pray, it is just... It's powerful and it's humbling. Uh, women, we're going to walk the floor with that thing and we're always praying about something and standing for something all the time. But when my husband comes in and prays, I just feel like it moves faster. I feel like our prayers together move things faster. And so this is just an invitation. Try God. He mm -hmm. works and he is amazing. That's in every relationship you have will be, be for the better. Now, a lot of us do a lot of good. A lot of us are busy doing good, but we ain't doing God. Yeah. So let's change yeah. this thing around and just start doing God and do good also. Amen. Amen. All right. You got anything else, I think, husband? I think that's it. He nailed it. Um, so again, every third Monday, we're going to try to just focus on the men. Yeah, hopefully, y'all don't feel like we, we beat you up today because that's not the goal. It's just um, 
a targeted time to pray for the men and to focus on the men. So if there's there's a, a man in your night in your life that needs this word, share this with him and just encourage him to watch on on um, Mondays on every third Monday, every Monday if he wants to. Um, women, you are of course welcome, but it's just really to focus on on the brothers and um, if there's something specific that you want. Um, Minister Al will be talking about for the brothers. Um, I love asking him questions. <laughs> Ladies, if there's a question. Oh my God. Uh, when we were dating, that was what we did. I asked him a lot of questions to get the male perspective on it. And his perspective whew, blew my mind. And I was like, women need to hear this. So if this, this may be the platform that God is using to expand that even more. But um, he's straight no chaser when it comes to uh, the things of God. So, um, yeah. So thank you for being obedient. I know this is outside of your <laughs> comfort zone. So we're going to pray, uh, specifically and just cover the men in your life and just, um, for all of us to put first things first. How about Amen. That? I mean, just, just spend time with God. Not only for the men, but for the women too. God wants you to spend, spend valuable time. But spend time with not just you, but one side of the conversation. He want he want to speak also. I mean, a lot of us do run through our devotion in the morning, you know, just just say that we we got some God in us, and that's good. I'm not telling you don't do that, but you know, just meditate on God's word, study God's word, and just listen for what He wants to tell you. Amen. That's, right. that's it. Yes, sir. Okay. We all wear glasses. Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Just thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Just thank you for always being here in our lives, dear Lord. And Father God, just thank you for your word, Father God. Yes, God. Father God, just thank you for taking time with us, Father God. Thank you for loving us, Father God. Just thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, Father God. And Father God, right now in this morning, Father God, we want to just encourage everyone, Father God, to just stay, just get into your word, Father God, to study your word, to meditate on your word, Father God. Father God, show us, Father God, show us, let us, Make time for you, dear Lord. Yes, Let us make time to be able to talk to you, Father God. And Father God, you walk with us each and every day. And sometimes we only know you're there. So, Father God, just continue to walk with us each and every day. Continue yes, to God. carry us, Father God, when we can't walk ourselves, Father God. And Father God, let us just be more obedient to spending time with you, Father God. Learning your word, Father God. Getting wisdom from you, dear Lord. Because that's the, the God of wisdom, the only wisdom we really need, Father yes. God. We need, we need you each and every day, dear Lord. We need you to walk with us. We need you to talk with us. We need you to give us guys and direction each and every day, Father God. Because our ways are flawed, dear Lord. Yes. So, Father God, just thank for all you do in our lives. Thank what you're about to do in our lives, Father God. And right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you have anything hindering us from doing your will, Father God. Hindering us from not spending time with you, Father God. We just lay it on the altar right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, take those things away that cause us not to spend time with you, dear Lord. And Father God, continue to just order our step each and every day. Because without you, we will fail, Father God. So Father God, we need you, Lord. We need you each and every day, Father God. We need you to walk with us, talk with us, Father God. We need you just to surround us with your love, Father God. Show us how to love each other, Father God. Show us how to make our relationship better with you, but also better with others, Father God. Yes, a better relationship with our children, Father God. A better relationship with our wives, Father God. Not only our children, Father God, but the children of the world, Father God. Father God, let us be the living example that you have set for us to be, Father God. Not by our will, by God, but by, by your will, dear Lord. Father God, just thank for all you're doing, Father God. We praise you, we honor you, dear Lord. Father, we just cover every man. We cover every man that is watching and every man that will watch, God. We cover fathers, God. We cover husbands. We cover sons. We cover grandsons. We cover uncles and cousins, God. We thank you, Father God, for these mighty men of valor. God, we call them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God, we realize that it is difficult to be a man, that there's a lot on their head and on their shoulders, God. But Father, we thank you for the example of King David, who when his men sought to kill him, the word says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for being a very present help in the time of trouble. I pray and I decree that you will meet every man right where he is, God, that you will... Um, 
pour into him a relationship, Father God, that is based on trust and is based on love, that he would come to know you in a greater way. God, that you would show yourself strong on his behalf. God, that as he draws close to you, that you will draw close to him. God, we're not giving up on any of them. God, we're continuing to hold them up before you, God, even those who are in hospitals or in prison walls, even if they're homeless, God, even if we don't even know where their whereabouts are. God, nothing is too hard for you, God. So we cast the care of these men over unto you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we trust you, God, to do a new thing, God, to bless them to be a blessing. We pray for every head of household, every head of our state. God, we pray for the president of the United States. We pray for peace in Jerusalem and Israel. We pray for our spiritual leaders, our pastors and ministers and teachers, God. We just thank you, Father God, for just blessing us, God. We thank you, Father God, that you are rising, raising up a mighty army of men who are on post, who are covering their families and being the spiritual head. God, not because they're so good, God, but because you are so good. Teach the women. Teach us, God, how to be support, how to be helpful, how to be encouraging, how to speak loving and encouraging words, God, how to be cheerleaders for them to do great things, God. I thank you, Father God for bringing us together. I thank you for this opportunity to cover our men, God. God, whatever it is that we should be mentioning, whatever it is that we should be holding up before you on behalf of families, God, we just decree and declare that it's done. God, and I just I just hear you saying to um, not let worry be a part of our lifestyle. Um, a lot of us have been worried about the men in our lives or worried about how things are going to work out or worried about sons or worried about what's going to happen next, God. But you are not in that. The worst is that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So I thank you, God, that we have a confident expectation of good, that we have hope in you, God, and that hope in you will not make us ashamed. Thank you, Father God, for doing a new thing in us, for us, and through us. Now, God, whatever it is we should be mentioning, whatever it is we should be holding up before you, God, we decree and declare that it's done and it is done well. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Listen, Amen. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you go throughout your day and go throughout your week. Continue just to cover the men in your life and just call their names in prayer. If there are men that we need to be praying for, just put their name in the chat or inbox us and we will be covering them. We just decree and declare that the enemy cannot have our men. We draw a hedge of protection, a bloodline around them, and we decree and declare that they shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Uh, we give honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We give honor to our overseer, Dr. Caesar Roland Richburg, and the entire First Family, the Richburg family. We give honor to each of you. You're not watching this by accident or by coincidence. Your prayers are changing a generation. So continue to draw close. Again, every third Monday, we're going to try to be committed to praying for the men. Anything else? Oh. Um, if you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into, not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound in your account. If there's a man that you're believing to come back into the knowledge of Christ or just to turn his life around, sow a seed that's directed towards that man and watch God move. God honors that. He honors every seed that's sowed, and we want seed that's sown to bring a harvest. So if you're believing for great things, then just um, declare over the men in your life that they will live and not die. Amen. Amen. Um, I heard you say something about worrying. A lot of women, a lot of men are probably here worrying, especially if you got children who really, who, who go in and walk well. Children who, 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 who out, teenagers, great being young adults. Um, a, lot, a lot of us are worrying about how our children are worrying about Police taking out children now. Not only police, but the, 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 the evil of the world. You know, God, well, he don't want us to worry about that. You know, he didn't put it in his hands. You know, and, and pray. You know, pray and give to God. You don't be worrying about stuff you ain't got no control over. And like I said, if you, if you have taught your child well, if you, if you, you led them in the word, you had them in church, they, 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 they got a background. They, they got what they need for right now. And, um, like me, I, I was raised in, in boy. I was raised in church. I strayed away, but I knew where I came from. I, I, I went back to it, and, and life's real good now. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And we see the comments. Uh, Mr. Net, we're definitely holding TJ up before the Lord and just declaring the favor of God upon him, that he lacks nothing, that his children are blessed, that he's blessed going out, that he's coming in, blessed coming in. I just decree and declare over each of you that are standing for the men in your lives. Don't think about this as something that's going to happen way far off. Put a demand on it that your eyes will see it. That it's not something that you hear about. That your eyes will see the change that you're believing God for. Nothing's too hard for God. God's, people stood in the gap for us. <laughs> so we ain't telling you about nothing that we heard. We're existing now on the prayers of others who called us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So just continue to, to remind the enemy that he can't have your loved one. And that uh, the men are coming forward. Even to women that are believing God for a godly husband husband or godly mate. Listen, don't let the world convince you that they're all gone. The devil is a liar. God has someone who is set aside is specifically for you. So even before he comes, begin to pray for him and just, just pray that he will be a godly man, that he will love the Lord with his whole heart and that um, all will be well concerning him. Okay. All right, so we are going to let you get back to your day. We love you with the love of Christ. We're going to go back through the comments and pray over each of you. Thank you guys so much for watching. We mm -hmm. love you. Anything else? No, and man, we can't even try to put this case study in there because some of the numbers is kind of crazy to me, but I want one day to study. <laughs> so steady that blew his mind about the fact that um, when men go to church, it affects the trajectory of their children's lives. So mm -hmm. I don't know why that's hard because we're living proof of that. But okay. But yeah, we're going to share it with you. I'm going to try to tag it um, in, in the uh, study when we sign off. So, all right. Anything else? You sure? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're praying for uh, Minister Ron. He is covered. Blood Jesus covers him, spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> <laughs> any other men uh we're gonna go back through and again like i said i go back through every um as soon as we finish and pray over all of the men but if there's someone specific that we need to be calling his name in prayer um if you don't feel comfortable putting it in the chat just inbox us and uh we'll definitely be praying all right mm -hmm. all right we love y'all have a blessed week bye bye, -bye.